What is logic? I'll admit, I will have difficulty finding a straightforward way of defining what logic is that will satisfy everyone who uses it and everybody who studies it. But if you weren't watching this video with me asking that question right now, you'd probably head over to your favorite know-it-all site, you know the one I'm talking about, and it would tell you that logic deals with valid reasoning. Perhaps we could call it structured thought, maybe even well-structured thought. I'll return to that difference between reasoning and reasoning well, since that split does come up in the historical back-and-forth dialogue on how to conceptualize and understand logic. But first, let's travel back to but one of the ancient peoples who started to talk about logic explicitly and use it to hone their language and their arguments. In ancient Greece, there lived a talkative and thoughtful fellow who was socially awkward enough that he failed to respect conversational boundaries, yet smart enough that he knew how to call people out on their foolishness. This is, of course, Socrates, who actually didn't claim he was so smart. He went around asking folks about presumably basic topics like courage and self-control, claiming that he didn't really understand these himself. He asked apparent experts to walk him through the details so that he could come to understand them, at least a little bit. But as Plato tells it, these initially light conversations go from bad to worse as the experts can't manage to give Socrates a solid case for their own perspectives on these topics. In fact, they're routinely forced to admit that they don't really know what they're talking about. But more than an ancient tale of intellectual one-upmanship, this is among history's most iconic demonstrations of logic in action. In a logical nutshell, Attempting to define words and sentences meaningfully and precisely, structuring sentences into an argument, and checking to make sure that that argument and those meanings produce a coherent line of reasoning that has a shot at drawing a true conclusion. Like other figures in other ancient societies, Socrates shows us that we can be thoughtful and precise in a way that allows us to build a solid argument and come to a specific conclusion. But there's a catch. The cost is, because our thoughts are explicit and not vague, our argument can be evaluated and corrected just as precisely, and we can be shown where we're wrong. On the other hand, our thoughts can remain vague and we can remain free of any need to argue for our point. But then we have no reason to think we're right, so it's shallow of us to hold that a certain precise conclusion is true. This was the mistake of the friends Socrates liked to chat with. They assumed they had something figured out, but had never really thought about it logically. Aristotle put this way of thinking under his scrutiny. As best he could see, he could reduce logical thinking to a basic set of structures. The basic structure of an argument was, for Aristotle, the syllogism, and it runs something like this. If A is B, and if B is C, then A is C. You can fill in A, B, and C with your own favorite terms to see what he was getting at. Here's my preference. If little Russian nesting doll fits inside medium Russian nesting doll and medium Russian nesting doll fits inside big Russian nesting doll, then little Russian nesting doll fits inside big Russian nesting doll. All men are mortal. Socrates is a man, so Socrates is mortal. It may seem basic, but in all syllogisms, we can use two supporting pieces of information to draw a novel conclusion that's not in that information already. This conclusion gets called an inference. Okay, we've used Socrates to look at logic as a way of tightening up our understanding of a topic, the contents of our reasoning. And we've used Aristotle to view logic as a way of structuring thoughts regardless of their contents, the form of our reasoning. That second part of logic, called formal logic, has done a lot to shape the makeup of logic over the centuries. By thinking abstractly with variables and operators to connect them, logicians have contributed to developments in mathematics, computer science, and many other endeavors. 
Rewind to that syllogism stuff. Logically, this structure is considered valid. That should mean it always works, right? Not so fast. Look, look, we can fill it in with some strange stuff. The conclusion doesn't actually have to be true for us to call this structure logical. Valid logic gives us true conclusions if we have true information to begin with. Verifying the accuracy of your content means, well, doing your homework on whatever it is you're arguing about. We have so many disciplines that study specific topics rigorously and in detail. Meteorologists aren't stuck imagining the reasonable possible conclusions they can come to about the weather. They can use logic to come to specific conclusions backed by their observations. And historians don't just think about logically possible sequences of events in the past, but argue for specific chronologies based on their studies. It's still logic, it's still logical, but the content is as specialized as the tools and methods used by the experts in these fields. If you've been paying attention as much as I expect anyone to pay attention to some video on the internet, you at least get that logic has something to do with how we think about stuff. Maybe you even gathered that it has much more to do with the thinking about part than the stuff part. Way to keep up. In all this thinking, does logic describe our thought process like an objective observer might? Or does it judge our reasoning, telling us how we ought to think like an impassioned partisan would? While some hopefuls have seen logic as, at least potentially, a kind of physics of thought, it's usually treated and defined more like an ethics of thought. It doesn't dictate how we think, only how we should think if we want to reason well. That doesn't make logic subjective in the sense of ultimately just up to anyone's whims. It just means that, since we can be logical or illogical in our thinking, we've got to work at it if we want to be logical.